Hashtag that. Filipino Good evening and welcome to the Hashtag PWOG's Report where we bring you weekly wrestling news from all around the world. Yes, we're exactly like a million different wrestling news sites out there, but we hope you're still watching us tonight anyway. I am your host, the Senorito Jake De Leon. I have been a professional wrestler here in the Philippines for the past five years now. It would have been six, but we're not counting the pandemic here. And please forgive me if I look like a politician tonight. It's just the barong. Anyway, I'm not your only host for tonight. So let me throw it to my co-anchor and tag team partner, the social media sinister, Ken Warren. Thanks, JDL. And of course, this is yours truly, the social media sinister ellipses, ellipses, ellipses. If you want to know the rest of my monikers, it's on my social media accounts. Just check it there, maybe on the link tree. My name is Ken Warren, and what do I feel about the hashtag PWOG's report? Honestly, I don't know what to expect, don't know what to say most of the time, and I would rather keep it that way. It's like Improv City. One hour, 30 minutes. Well, this part's edited. I'll shut my mouth. Back to you, JBL. Thank you, Ken. Our top story for tonight, Shaquille O'Neal made his AEW debut this week, teaming up with Jade Cargill to take on the team of Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet in a mixed tag team match. Although Shaq and Cargill were the victors that night, it wasn't without Shaq going through two tables, taking him out of the match and into an ambulance. Ooh, big swing and a miss, and Cody with the poke of the eyes. Now Cody, Cody on the top. Oh, oh my God, God in Good God almighty, the tables are everywhere. People are shattered. It's incredible. However, after the match, as Tony Schiavone was about to check in on Shaq, the great Aristotle was mysteriously missing. So here's my message for Shaq. One, get well soon, big fella. And two, if ever you do come back to wrestling, please come back as Kazam. For my side of the news, first up, we got Edge versus Roman Reigns. The head of the table versus the edge of the table. WWE needed a hard-hitting main event for this year's WrestleMania, one of the two days. And honestly, since they started removing the numbers, I can't tell which WrestleMania this is. Fans needed to be surprised at the Rumble. Fans of old and new are going to move back in WWE program. Edge is picking up his career where it left off circa 2011. Roman Reigns, on the other hand, is at the peak of his career. Spear vs. Spear, you think you know me vs. Acknowledge me, oops. Hell, we even got the pirate theme back. Talk about rated R superstars. I'm just ready for WWE's resident bipolar Thanos, our tribal chief, to walk out of WrestleMania hashtag and still your reigning, defending, undisputed universal champion at the grandest stage of them all. Once again. On Monday Night Raw, Bobby Lashley defeated The Miz to become the new WWE champion. So first of all, we'd like to congratulate Bobby Lashley and the Hurt Business for one great achievement. And we all know that Chad Gaspard was looking down from heaven and smiling so hard. Rest in peace, Chad. However, what this anchor, what this news anchor would like to know right now is, where is Brock Lesnar? We want Brock Lesnar to face off against Bobby Lashley on WrestleMania because as we all know, and Big E said it best, we want Big Meaty Man slapping me. <laughs> Next up, we got a two-parter news. Current IWGP United States Champion and number one contender for the AEW Championship, John Moxley, successfully defended his IWGP United States Championship against Kenta this past MJPW Strong, dated Feb 26, 2021. In line with this, he also has an upcoming AEW Championship match and an exploding barbed wire death match with Kenny Omega, current AEW Champion at AEW Revolution. Hooey, hooey, hooey. At this point, brother Omega might as well start calling Mox Daddy too. I mean, seriously, champ, why would you challenge the man in an exploding barbed wire death match? He's literally known as Death Rider on NJPW. 
I'm surprised brother Switchblade and brother Kenta did not warn you about this. Don't get me wrong, Cleaner. I'm a fan. I just hope in the good name of the good brothers, things don't go down south, Park. And I end up saying, oh my god, Max killed Kenny, you bastard, at the end of Revolution. On the Joshi side of things this week, Tam Nakano defeated Julia in a hair versus hair title match to win the Wonder of Stardom title, aka the White Belt over in Stardom, Japan. Now, after the match and as per stipulation, Julia's hair was shaved off, but she still looks pretty damn good. I mean, no doubt about it. So it has me thinking, if you lose a hair versus hair match and you have your head shaved and you still look that damn good, did you really lose? In more news, Adam Cole, baby, like in Southeast Asian artists. Adam Cole recently expressed his appreciation for Easy Mail and Rosa Blackpink. Now I gotta be honest, I don't know who the latter is, but the former, turn it up! Seeing as though this former Undisputed Era member is exploring more Asian talents, let me give a few recommendations. Number 1. Ilona Garcia Number 2. Shadow Moses Theme song for OGs. Y'all get the point. And number 3. Hashtag PWOGs now, we don't regularly sing unless there's a karaoke present, but let me give you a sample. We're in Spain. The letter S is silent. It's what the Houston Rockets Twitter account tweeted the other day, or something like that. Now let's take it to a segment that Ken and I would like to call the take of the week where we each give our own thoughts on a piece of wrestling news. And tonight, the topic will be the unification of the IWGP Intercontinental and World titles by Kota Ibushi. Now, I have my own thoughts on this matter, but to truly encapsulate how I feel, let me just read this tweet from the Switchblade, Jay White. <clears throat> Wants to become a double champion? Becomes a double champion. Realizes that means defending two championships. Doesn't want to be a double champion anymore. Reverts back to being a single champion. Congratulations, you supported him. You get the champion you deserve. What are your thoughts, Ken? I don't know why, but I kinda like it. It's about time NJPW gets rid of their intercontinental title. Literally everyone in the roster are workhorses, and that should be enough validation. Period. Now, if they can just get rid of the briefcase gimmick too, NJPW will get their identity back, excluding strong style and actual wrestling, which they're actually good at and amazing at. Don't even get me started. Brother, it's softly. Hi. And that is it for the take of the week, and that is it for us on the hashtag PWOG's report. Catch us every 8 p.m. on Sunday as we recap the week in wrestling and make sure to follow us on social media at DKen Warren and at Senorita JDL. This, this has been, been the hashtag, hashtag PWOG's, PWOG's report. report. Signing, Signing off. off. I hope we were synced. Hashtag that. <laughs> The Philippine Rush. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.